Hello everyone. Today we are going to start with unit number two of power electronics subject. Name of this unit is AC to DC power converters. Our today's topic is single phase converters. In today's session, we are going to cover following subtopics: commutation, semi-converters with R and RL load, full converters with R and RL load. And free wheeling diodes. Myself, Professor Amit Kumar Mishra. I am having total ten years of teaching experience. My domain expertise is of also ten years. Let's start with the first topic, commutation. Turning off the SCR is called as commutation. Commutation is of two type: line commutation, which is also called as natural commutation, and Forced commutation. In natural commutation, device get turn off automatically. It occurs in AC circuit. Here in this circuit, we had given AC supply across SCR. So during positive half cycle, SCR will get turn off, and when negative half cycle of the AC will come, the device SCR will get turn off. So the device get turn off automatically. So this is natural commutation. Next is forced commutation. In forced commutation, external circuits are being used, which causes devices to get turned off. It occurs in DC circuits. This is SCR. We have connected the DC supply across it. So, to turn it off, we need some external circuit, which is not there in the circuit, so that this circuit will turn off this SCR. So, device. Or SCR is not getting turn off automatically, but we are forcing it to get turn off. Hence, this type of technique or commutation technique is called as forced commutation. Difference between natural and forced commutation. In natural commutation, it requires AC voltage at input. Forced commutation requires DC voltage at input. Natural commutation, external components are not required. In forced commutation, external components are required. In natural commutation, it is used in controlled rectifiers and AC voltage controllers. Forced commutation used in choppers, inverters, etc. Natural commutation, SCR turns off due to negative supply voltage. SCR turns off due to current and voltage both. In natural commutation, no power loss takes place during commutation. Forced commutation, power loss takes place due to commutation. Natural commutation, zero cost, whereas forced commutation, there is some significant cost. Why? Because we connect some external circuit, so the cost of that circuit has been added. Next topic is single phase semiconductor for. R load, resistive load. This is a circuit diagram of single phase semiconductor resistive load. Here we have two thyristors T1 and T2 and two diode D1 and D2. We are going to get output across the load R. We are giving AC voltage, input voltage, single phase AC voltage from the input, and we are going to get some pulsating DC across the output. Let's see how this circuit will work. So when positive half cycle of the AC supply will come, thyristor T1 and diode D1 will get forward biased. As thyristor is having gate terminal, so we need to trigger thyristor. So during positive half cycle, we are going to trigger T1. Current will flow in this way from L to T1 to R to D1 to N. As soon as current will cross the resistance R, we are going to get the output across the load. Next, negative half cycle will come. When negative half cycle will come, T2 and D2 will be forward biased. We have to trigger T2. As we are going to trigger T2, it will allow the flow of current. Current will flow in this fashion from N to T2 to R to D2 to L. And we are going to get the output across the load. Let's understand this with the help of this waveform. So this is the AC input supply. 
During positive half cycle, we are triggering T1. So we are getting the output because of current which is flowing in T1 and D1. During negative half cycle, we are triggering T2. So the output which we are getting is because of T2 and D2. And same again, positive half cycle, we are getting the output because of T1 and D1. The last waveform is the drop across the thyristors. Means during positive half cycle, we are getting this much of output only. So this part we are not getting, so that is the drop. In negative half cycle, we are getting this much of output, we are not getting this part. So that is the drop across the thyristor. And same over here also. Next is single phase semi-converter for inductive load. So it's a semi-converter again, consists of two thyristors and there will be two diodes, D1 and D2. We are going to get the output across the load. As uh, load is having the inductor, so this is an inductive load. We are giving the AC supply from the input side. Let's see how it works. So during positive half, uh, during positive half cycle of the AC supply, thyristor T1 and diode D1 will be forward biased. So we are going to trigger T1. As soon as we are going to trigger T1, current will flow like this from T1 to R to L to D1 to the input source. And we are going to get the output across the load. Inductor L will store the energy. During negative half cycle, T2 and D2 will be forward biased. We are going to trigger T2. As we are going to trigger T2, before triggering T2, at the starting of the negative half cycle, inductor will dissipate the energy. Once it will complete dissipate the energy, after that we are supposed to trigger T2. As we will trigger T2, the current will start flowing from T2 to R to L to D2 to the input of the AC, to the AC input supply. Again, we are going to get the output across the load and inductor will store the energy. Next, again, positive half cycle will come. T1 and D1 will be forward bias. Inductor will store the, uh, dissipate the energy. We have to trigger T1. Again, the current will flow from T1 to R to L to D1 to the input source. We are going to get the output across the load. Inductor will store the energy. Let's understand this circuit operation that is single phase semi-converter with inductive load with the help of this waveform. This is the input waveform. We are giving, we are triggering during each half cycle, positive half cycle as well as negative half cycle. So during positive half cycle, we are triggering thyristor one. So IG one we have written over here. During negative half cycle, we are triggering thyristor two. So IG two has been written over here. Now, as we are triggering during positive half cycle, after that we are getting the output. In negative half cycle, as we are triggering, we are getting the output. The thing is, even though this is an inductive load, but we are not getting any negative voltage or dissipation of the voltage over here. Why it is so? It's only because when inductor will dissipate the energy, it will dissipate that through this diode. So these diodes are going to act like freewheeling diode over here. So there is no negative voltage or dissipation or a reversal of voltage will be there across the in the output signal. This is output current waveform for semi-converter inductive load. This is the drop across the thyristor T1 and this is the drop across thyristor T2. Next is single phase full converter for resistive load. This is the circuit diagram for that. It consists of four thyristor T1, T2, T3 and T4. This is the resistive load. We are giving the AC input and we are going to get pulsating DC across the load. During positive half cycle of the input, T1 and T2 is forward biased. We have to trigger T1 and T2. So it will allow the flow of current and we are going to get the output across the load. During negative half cycle of the AC supply, T3 and T4 will be forward biased. We have to trigger T3 and T4 and hence we are going to get the output across the load. This is the waveform for that. So during positive half cycle, we are triggering T1 and T2. We are getting the output voltage because of that. During negative half cycle, we are triggering T3 and T4. We are getting the output because of that. 
this is the output current you can see over here the shape of output current and output voltage is same only the magnitude of output current is less as compared to output voltage this is only because output current is voltage upon resistance this is uh, the drop across thyristor t1 and t2 and this is the drop across thyristor t3 and t4 see this is the input voltage which we are giving this is positive half cycle this is negative half cycle if we consider the drop across t1 and t2 so we are giving this whole cycle we are getting this much only across the output so this part we are not getting at the output so this will be the drop now during negative half cycle we are getting the output but this output we are getting because of thyristor t3 and t4 not because of thyristor t1 and t2 so this we will consider as a drop for t1 and t2 in the same this will be repeated again over here similarly we can draw the drop for t3 and t4 also next is single phase full converter for inductive load this is the circuit diagram of that it consists of four thyristor s1 s2 s3 and s4 inductive load is there we are giving the ac supply from the input during positive half cycle s1 and s2 will be forward biased so it will allow the flow of current we are going to get the output across the load inductor will store the energy during negative half cycle s3 and s4 will be forward biased this inductor which it has stored energy during positive half cycle now it will dissipate that energy after dissipation of the energy we are going to trigger s3 and s4 so s3 and s4 will allow the flow of current we are going to get the output across the load again it will the inductor will store the energy now during positive half cycle s1 and s2 will be forward bias inductor will dissipate the energy we have to trigger s1 and s2 again it will allow the flow of current inductor will store the energy so during one half cycle inductor will store the energy and during next half cycle it will dissipate the energy let's understand this waveform so this is positive half cycle of the ac this is negative half cycle of the ac so during positive half cycle of the ac we are triggering s1 and s2 we are getting the output voltage over here here inductor will store the energy and in next half cycle before triggering the scr s3 and s4 inductor will dissipate the energy that dissipation of the energy has been shown over here with the negative voltage again once we have triggered s3 and s4 we are going to get the output voltage because of s3 and s4 then positive half cycle will come so the inductor which has it has stored the energy it will dissipate over here once complete dissipation will takes place after that we will trigger s1 and s2 so we are going to get the output voltage because of s1 and s2 this is the waveform for output current for single phase full converter inductive load next is effect of free wheeling diode first of all what is free wheeling diode so a diode which is connected across the load is called as free wheeling diode this diode is power diode its doping density is more as compared to normal diode what is the function of free wheeling diode the first function is free wheeling diode will take load current away from the source second it will avoid reversal of voltage and third is power factor will get improved let's understand the function how it work this diode free wheeling diode will work so this is the circuit diagram of semi converter or half converter so we have to trigger the scr in positive half cycle only so we are going to get the output voltage but this is an inductive load so we are supposed to get the reversal of voltage or negative voltage over here but we are not getting this over here let's see why so this source has been connected across the thyristor so what will happen is the energy or input will pass through it inductor will store that in next half cycle inductor will dissipate that in our previous case when this diode was not there this dissipation of energy take the energy toward the input or toward the source so that source the energy which is coming toward the source we were denoting that with the reversal of voltage or negative voltage but as we have connected connected the diode so this reversal of voltage will not takes place because the energy which has been dissipated by the inductor will be taken by this diode this diode is free wheeling diode so that energy will get utilized hence we have the reversal of voltage won't takes place because of 
connecting this, revealing that. So what is output current? So this is the waveform for output current in case we are connecting the freewheeling diode, which is almost linear, but not exactly linear. Why? Because this is not, uh, we have not connected two thyristor. If we would have connected two thyristor, then definitely we would have got linear, or we can say straight or pure DC current. Last is drop. So from input, if we subtract this output voltage, whatever the thing left, that is the drop across this thyristor. So this is effect of revealing diode. In this lesson, we have learned commutation, semi-converters with R and RL load, full converters with R and RL load, and effect of freewheeling diodes. Thank you.